Hello, welcome to The Good Life um, Meditation for, this is a Wednesday, uh, September 7th, 2022. A day that will live in infamy, right? Pearl Harbor Day. Uh, my name is Kurt, and this is something I do every morning. I think about my life objectives and principles as outlined in my book, Going Alone, and um, consider these, and uh, think about how, I'm did, how I did applying those to yesterday the challenges and the opportunities yesterday and to plan for the coming day. So I've discovered something new, which is that I, since if I read it as a, from the book, which I usually try to challenge myself to do it from memory, but if I read it from the book, I make sure I cover the sub-principles too, which is important. To that end, I'd like to get a newer copy of the book. It has, because some of this is missing some of the sub-principles. So, um, there's that. Um, I'm also going to do something different today. I'm going to add in a, a, an ode to Epictetus. I might do this on a regular basis when I get to the principle called that which must be born. Yeah. And the horror show it belongs there. Which those two go, go together. First, last night and yesterday. Um, slept all right. I was up in the middle of the night. Uh, Ollie was the, the black dog was um, up and kind of uh, restless. He's He needs his... Uh, his uh, uh, allergy med meds, his um, his shot. So, uh, well, shot, not shot. <laughs> uh, so I'll make an appointment for him today to uh, go see the doctor, the vet. So he was up, and I so I kind of was awake with him, comforting him because he was restless. He's better now. Uh, yesterday was a good day, good solid day of work. My computer was on the fritz at work. So the technician there was helping me to get set up with a, a desktop unit while he was working on my laptop. So it was, the day was not as productive as it could have been, but it's what you got to do, right? I mean, boy, boy it, that, it dovetails perfectly with what I want to do when I want to talk about my Epictetus moment that I'll do in the good life today. Um, other than that, I, I had been in the office. It was a very social day yesterday. We had a big event. And I did a good job of tempering my speech, not going in too much. I went a little bit overboard, but then bullseye aim, right? Hashtag bullseye aim. Um, you know, hashtag public speaking. Hashtag temperance. Wrapped all those things together. I did better than average, for sure. Better than I would have done a decade ago, for sure. Big time, for sure. Okay, so let's do the good life. Let me grab the book. So I'll follow along so I don't miss anything. It kind of takes away from the challenge of remembering it all, but that's all right. Okay, so the first thing I have in oh, but this is my uh, this is my book going alone. Uh, and in that book, there's a chapter called "The Good Life," where I in categorically enumerate and describe seven objectives and 32 principles that I use to run a better life. So first, first objective is to be always ready to die. And this means that I need to have my life affairs in order, my relationships in good shape, and my life's work uh, in a good state of readiness so that if I die, I've uh, left those things in behind in the best shape that I can. And I think I have. Number two, excuse me. Ooh. Number two is to make good and effective use of time and resources. It's good to read it because I usually forget to say the resources part. I don't want to let the days just slide by and forget about them. Oh, I forgot to mark. I think I forgot to mark the calendar. Huh. My death, my death calendar thinking of which. I want to do good things. I want to good, be effective. I want to be making forward motion in the direction of what I define as a well-lived life which is the sum total of the seven objectives here. Hmm. Some things that, in the, in the book I have them listed out here, some things that I might like to, uh, that I consider a good use of time are breathing slow and measured breaths, controlling my emotions, thinking and acting deliberately, imagining the future, admitting I was wrong, making a pet happy. There's a long, is more, it's a long list. Okay, the next one is to uh, develop and maintain 
good and sound principles. That's these 7 and 32 that I'm reciting right now. And I do that by attending to this every day. The next item is to cultivate good emotional reactions, to, to become such a man that I, I react well. I don't fly off the handle or, dis, or not engage, but I engage just the right amount. Um, rec using, using apathy, which I'll talk about in a second, to help recognize where that limit is. Or that maybe a better way to say it is where the arena of, of potential engagement is. The next one is to perform good actions, just to do good things throughout the day. Uh, easing suffering, improving well-being, making, ha making others happy, including myself. Next is to recognize my true limits and my true opportunity so that I'm engaged in the spheres where I can actually do something about. And although I can note those things that are outside those spheres, I don't necessarily engage with them. I don't try to uh, I don't try to mitigate the storms on Jupiter. I can know about them. But I can close the shutters in the house. Hey, I like that. When, when the stormy weather comes here. <laughs> uh, that's where I use apathy. Apathy is to, to when you out, see what is outside the control and you disengage from it. Like, I'm apathetic towards the storms on Jupiter. I know about them, whether they rage or whether they're mellow. I'm apathetic. It doesn't really matter to me. It's just something that's happening. Likewise, could I be, wouldn't this be something if I could be apathetic to my own cancer? You know, once I recognize I don't have cancer, but that I, not, not that I know of, but if I did find out I had cancer, I could be, I could be engaged. I could recognize where the line is, what the things, the activities that I can do. Let's say it's stage four and it's going to take me out. Um, I can recognize what I can do and make a judicious decision about what I'm going to engage with and then be apathetic about the same stuff that's outside of that. Like, like the, the course that, that I'm, the downward course that I will take towards death. Could, I could hold that with the same regard that I hold, hold this to the, towards the storms on Jupiter. That's a master class to be able to get there. And, and I think you'd only get there once if you could, and maybe for bits by bits as you did, but I would, that's, that's the spirit of this principle. What a way to go through life, to recognize what is outside of our sphere of control and to apply apathy to treat them like the storms of Jupiter. Not to, to not care, but to just recognize that it's outside control. Why, why, why get upset? Why be stressed? Why worry about the storms on Jupiter? Why be upset? Why, 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 why worry? about, you know, the stage four cancer that's going to take me out. It's going to take me out. The worrying ain't going to help. Highfalutin goals, huh? The next one, and this is number seven, is one thing slowly. Just to do one thing at a time and to do that slowly and deliberately and carefully. Okay, now my 31 principles. The first is the principle of war. A reminder to always be fighting against what I think is true and what others propose to me is true. Um... I always want to hold truth tentatively and to review them and to be ready to give them up in a moment's notice. The next is the principle of reason, which has four sub-principles, honesty, objectivity, doubt, and humiliation. Um, reason is the instrument that I use to determine, determine what, is, what is true, what I will apply it for, for to, what is in fact within the scope of my control to where to apply my apathy. And I do this by being honest, objective, a fierce skeptic, and uh, in tune with the fact that humiliation is, uh, the sense of humiliation is usually a sign that I've, I've, um, I've gone over the line of some sort, right? That I, I, need, I need to rein things in in some capacity. Here's a quote from Aristotle. The life of reason is best and pleasantest, since reason, more than anything else, is man, so too this life is also the happiness, happiest. Then comes the homunculus. I don't think we have a soul, but I do think we have a consciousness. And that's where I, 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 I work on is the uh, um, management of my consciousness. And my conscience, to that matter. 
<laughs> then comes the anchor hold, which is the place where we suffer and die. It's it's the uh, it's the try. It's the fact that we're stuck amidst all this choi boiling, roiling life. We have to just do our best to to get through. It'll kill us. It'll it'll hurt us. It'll cause us suffering along the way. It's not quite different because the way I just describe it, it sounds like another principle called that which must be born. The anchor hold is a visual image. You picture a rock sticking out of a vast sea and a man or woman standing on that rock, and that's you or me. Um, and you're stuck on that rock. You can't get off of it. There's other rocks with other people on them, and the, the ocean is rough at times and calm at times, and the sun beats down, and you can't get in the water. You'll die. That's the anchor hold, and we're all stuck on one. We're ultimately alone. And we're ultimately doomed to all go end up in the water. Pleasant, huh? But it's really it's how reality really is. Hmm. Next is the home of good and evil. That's uh, just a reminder that uh, right and wrong, good and evil, are opinions. They're not absolutes in the universe. There are no Ten Commandments written by some celestial hand. Um, the, at least there's no good reason to think that that's the case. So operatively, I operate as though that's not the case. I also operatively, op, I, I also operate as if there's no God, no oversight, no soul, no heaven or hell, no eternity for any of us. Good and evil also, as they're not absolutes, are opinions that are subject to modification if we have more and better information, also sent, subject to discussion and consensus, in which they gain more strength. They, they become somewhat objective, only through the agreement that comes of uh, thinking, thinking creatures, rational thinking creatures, sentient thinking creatures. Rational thinking, sentient creatures. There you go. Next comes the principle of purpose and has three sub principles biology, virtue, and mission. Biology is the purpose of uh, raising our children into adulthood, virtue is the purpose of being a virtuous man, at least in, as I apply it to myself where virtue is defined as working towards the improvement of well-being of, of the well-being of thinking creatures, reducing suffering, improving happiness, uh, virtuous happiness. And then uh, mission, my mission is this book, sharing of it. That's what I'm doing right now. Okay, the atomic principle. Um, there's two sub-principles, dis dissolution and emergence. It's like the phoenix burning and rising from the ashes, right? So, we, so to us, we are atoms, molecules, compounds. Uh, very quickly, each of us will die and dissolve away and then reemerge as something else. Our, our not us, but the stuff that we are, of which we are formed will be reused, or the ultimate in recycling. And then comes the principle of nature, which can, contains two sub-principles, composition and inertia. Uh, everything has some particular nature the way that it is. That is reflected in its composition, the way the things of which it's formed. A rock has a particular nature based on its rocky mineralized form. A glass of water has a particular nature given its liquid form. Uh, you have a particular nature, that dog has a particular nature, as does I. Inertia is the energy and motion that a th an object is in. So part of my nature is the inertia of the living vitality that I have, the, um, including my... Um, my metabolism, the, 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 the movement, the part of the nature of Earth is, is its composition and its inertia traveling and hurtling through space. You have to see both of those components to get the, the broader, broader perspective on it, something's nature. Then comes the pirate ride, just a suggestion that free will is an illusion. I can't prove it, but I believe it. Hang my hat on that. And then the principle of maturity, which has three sub-principles, wisdom, fortitude, and integrity. Uh, we are mature when we wisely remember our past failures and successes and work towards doing better, have the fortitude to do that. And uh, integrity is when we live according to our principles. Uh, we are um, living a prudent life. I think I have prudence in here somewhere where we uh, you know, consider our actions and our ideas and the, what, the things that we hold relative to our values. Then comes the social principle, and the principles of diplomacy, justice, and conspiracy. Conspiracy, huh. The social principle, we are social creatures, we need each other, right? Where did I get the conspiracy part? 
Let's read this. Human beings generally operate in pursuit of our own well-being and the well-being of one another. We can survive alone, though we rarely flourish in solitude, and we risk that whatever understanding and wisdom we gain in deep and persistent disconnect may not easily may not be easily communicated or translated to others, and may become irrelevant, irrelevant babble despite being true. Therefore, find one another and make good effort to be together and share ideas. Go alone at times, but always return to be with others. I will become a diplomat and ambassador to not only the familiar, but also the strange and new. Become a man or woman of another, of one another. We will conspire together towards what we perceive and decide is good. Oh, there's a conspiracy. These are lofty goals, something I struggle daily to attain. So the conspiracy is the effort that we make when we have a, an agreement in our, in, our, in our core principles. And we conspire towards the better ends that would be achieved through the pursuit of those. I get it. Then comes a principle called public speaking, and it has four sub-principles, small words, rumor, prudence, there's prudence, and gossip. So public speaking is uh, using appropriate words and language in both written and, and spoken format, um, avoiding uh, invol getting involved in gossip or trading in rumor, and uh, uh, using prudence to help us to uh, determine what we're going to say, who we're going to say it to, and uh, when and how. Hmm, I like that. Also, I already talked about the gossip, don't gossip. Then comes temperance and the sub-principles of suffering, simplicity, and here's apathy, but apathy belongs elsewhere. Good, but it belongs here too. It's okay that it's here in this book. It's in the newer books, it's moved. I talked about apathy already. Temperance is our controlled consumption of all things, work, play, food, drink, sex, uh, you know, uh, reading, whatever you want to do, just a controlled consumption. And the principles of suffering and simplicity suggest that we, su we suffer when we deny ourselves what we want. Pru uh, uh, temperance is hard because we say no to ourselves. <laughs> simplicity, because a simple life is by definition uh, a temperate life. And here's a quote from Anthony the Great. Keep your tongue and your belly under control. The next principle is life will not go well. And let's do this two together. The second pr the principle after that is called the horror show. So those two go together. Life will not go well and the horror show. Uh, there's no sub-principles, right? No. Life will not go well speaks to the day-to-day, -day, that things are going to not always go well. It kind of talks about the bullseye aim a little bit, tries striving for but missing the mark. But it's a little bit different. It simply suggests to, to me to expect things to not always work out. Like yesterday, we had an event and there was a problem. There was a slight thing with that event that happened. It was a Tuesday after a holiday. There wasn't a good attendance. It was a Tuesday after a holiday, plus there was a lot of activity going on in the office and people couldn't come, so attendance was low. Life will not go well. Things will happen along those lines. Speed bumps will happen, flat tire on the way to work. Um, you know, I'm going to do, do a... I, I did a speech in that, in that presentation yesterday, and I kind of fumbled the speech at one point. All kinds of stuff, right? And then the horror show speaks to the events that happen that are bad, that are in clatic cataclysmic, it's gigantic, right? When things really go badly, and that happens too. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a little Epictetus moment now. I'm going to, what Ep Epictetus suggests, I'm reading Epictetus' discourses right now, um, and yesterday I read how Epi an exercise of Epictetus would be to reflect upon how, just how bad things can go, so that we can keep that as a relative gauge of things right now it's a kind of a counterintuitive exercise because we don't usually do that we talk, call such people pessimists but i'm going to give it a try i tried it yesterday i made a youtube short over it so here we go yeah my epictetus corner or epictetus moment today could be the day that i encounter a pain in my body somewhere that after seeing the doctor i'll discover that um, i've got the beginning of a of a of a terrible disease a disease that will cause wasting away uh, and ultimately great pain and, and a death in the long run. Maybe uh, stage four cancer, maybe colon cancer, which could be quite painful. Or maybe a mental disease that will uh, rob me of my uh, fac current faculties that I enjoy. <laughs> Excuse me. I enjoy exercising for the, uh, to help me pursue my the better, best life I, I can. That could come to an end. Worse yet. Huh. <sighs> 
So to pay me for, for, home, for home, my wife or daughter, my daughter could be, uh, could she's got a, a scooter at school. She could uh, hit the curb, crack in the curb, big crack in the curb, and fall over and uh, bang her head on a wall and uh, bleed out all over the place and uh, hemorrhage and go and suffer and die today uh, from an accident at school. Or she could be kidnapped by somebody, um, uh, you know, and, and taken away and uh, terrible things happen to her and never see her again. You know, about into human trafficking. Or likewise for my wife, you know, the onset of Alzheimer's that she worries about could be, could start. Um, in which case that would be really pretty bad. Ollie the dog, he's getting older, something bad could happen to him. The car could break down on my way to work. Um, my project, I've got some things I need to do. I may forget to do it again today and it gets a little worse. Um, it, it's, uh, but who guaranteed me? Now here's the Epictetus part, right? It's one thing to catalog all the problems. It's another thing to catalog them and remember why were these things ever guaranteed? Who, why would I expect otherwise? If I was to get a fatal disease, what guarantee, what, what, what guarantee did I ever have, even if I have an insurance policy, that I would not happen? Right? It's you know, part and parcel of living. If my daughter was to fall and crack her head and bleed out and die, um, did I expect otherwise? Was there? Did I? Did I expect the, the campus of her school to be softened with cushions everywhere, or was I to live such a prudent life that she could, in such a way as a parent that I could protect her from every ail, um, every 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 danger? If my wife uh, did get Alzheimer's, um, um, w w w was she in some way? In, reckoned immune from, from this thing that appears to run in her family. Did I think my dog would not die or that I would be, I would be n anything but forgetful at work? Okay, I think I did a so-so job, you know. I'm supposed to color the world with the worst case and then be ready to, so it doesn't surprise us, it doesn't ambush when it happens. You have to do it in such a way that you don't become a pessimist and drawn down by that, which is kind of counterintuitive because we, we Americans normally don't like think that way or talk that way for sure. So I think I covered those two. The next one is called that which must be born, which is mean, mainly means we have to bear the fact that life won't go well. We have to bear the fact of the horror show. Um, it's our, it's our, it's our, it's our, it's our role to do. Well, what else are we going to do? Rail at the heavens. Yeah, that's the next one. The Feast of Ophel. So I put that in the right place. The Feast of Ophel is when we do rail at the heavens. We, Gosh darn the gosh dang. Why is this happening to me? You know, and then let everybody know about it. Or or worse yet, get upset and spew it out all over our, usually our family, right? I used to do that a long time ago. Fortunately, Emma is very small. She doesn't really remember. She remembers a little bit. I used to let things build up, build up, build up, and blow up. You know, that's the Feast of Ophel, you know, like blah, vomiting out all the upset into the world and people splatters them in the face and it gets in their mouth and then it poisons them and then they go and do the same. I try not to do that. I don't do that anymore. I've, I've overcome that. And when other people are doing it, which isn't very often, I don't swallow it. I keep my mouth shut. I'm not going to eat that. When they're all done, I'll, I'll give them a, I'll offer them a tissue for, to wipe their tears and give them a hug. The next one is the principle of distraction. I'm looking at the clock, I better hurry up. We distract ourselves throughout our lives with our work and our play and our, our hobbies and our home and our families and our church and our gods. We do that so we don't have to see the next principle, which is the called agency and the great indifference. Namely, the great indifference is the emptiness of the universe, a universe without God. Then comes the best seat in the house, which is to want to be okay with who I am, where I am, and what I'm doing. Right here, right now, right who? Here's a quote from St. Paul. I have learned, I have learned, in whatever state I am, therewith to be content. Then comes the restless man. Oh, uh, I wish I could just escape from this status quo and, and, and have an adventure, go off and have a new life. There's just all these things, that's what we, we operate. And I think that men are more susceptible to that than women. I think women tend to be more nesters. Um, men tend to want to go out and explore over the next mountain to see what kind of game is game is over there. See what's over there, right? What resources are there? I think that's an, a survival thing that we need to do. That as part of how we survive, how we scattered as a species across the planet. Uh, we're restless, particularly men. And when we do that, when we step off of that, out of out of our status quo into something new, we enter on what I call the path of wildness, which is the next principle. 
and then if two subprinciples here, the shadow dividend and the Ulysses ride. Let's read. At every, at every life crossroads, I will assess the fact that a decision must be made and then determine how much time I have to make it and then collect my facts and consider the options and then decide at the appointed time. If my facts are insufficient and there really is no more time, then I will listen to my gut instinct, let it have its say, and then perhaps move in that direction. Confident in having made the best evaluation I could, in a reasonable amount of time, and with the resources and facts at my disposal. I will be all right with whatever outcome, even if the next end is death, and I will be where the hard benefits, I will be where, and I will be where the hard benefits which come of such change. Hmm, interesting that I say beware. Did I mean beware of? And I will be, I will beware the hard benefit, benefits of, as this is also going to get to edit the book, of what come of such change. And I will beware the hard benefit benefits what which come of such change. Hard benefits. Hmm. The improvements, that sounds good. Uh, the improvements which hurt, but which can be had in no other way. The shadow dividend of the pain of change and the loss of what was no longer needed. Ah, that's why it's a shadow dividend. Because it's the dividend that comes of loss. And I will suffer well through the decided pathways, pathway like Ulysses riding the storm and temptation which he chose for his own. And I will ride, I will suffer well through the decided pathway. Right, the decided isn't, isn't the one of non-free will, but it's the seeming decision of going forward, which again, I don't think we have free will in deciding that. We were going to decide that path, but I will suffer well through the adversity of doing that, like Ulysses with his ears stopped and tied to the mast, listening to the siren song. Okay, I think I'm getting better at this one. It's really good to read the book. It gets me in deeper. The next is the great life adventure, which is what comes of, you know, the path of wildness. You get a great life adventure. And Jock Dr. Johnson has something to say here. He says, he who continues the same course of life in the same place will have little to tell. So true. You, don't, you won't have an adventure to share. <clears throat> you'll, have an, you'll have an experience. I guess it's an adventure of sorts, but rather pedestrian. The risk of avoiding risk, the deep and the surface level risks of life, you know, able to attend to security, career, home, family, etc., while also finding oneself. Then comes sin and damnation and the sub principles of falsity, credulity, faith, superstition, dogma, and gossip. They, they don't want to do any of those things. The consequence of that is damnation in the here and now. And then complete oblivion and the sub-principles of no final reunion, no final reconciliation, and no final justice. Yep, that's what happens after we're dead. If there's no God, there's no soul, and there's no afterlife, then we won't have a reunion with the ones we love. We can't reconcile our differences, and there won't be any justice. So you better work on those things now. Then comes the season of philosophy, which is the time to record what we've learned along the way. Then the bulls I aim, st striving to hit the mark, but usually missing and being aware of that. Epictetus' moment, Epictetus' reflection would help with that. Then the uphill climb, steadily moving forward, higher and upwards. And then arena and utility, reminding myself that life is an arena for the execution of, of the, the engagement with life through the execution of our principles towards the aims of our objectives. Which, and these principles are like tools that we use in the course of it. I like to imagine like a gladiatorial arena. We're out there fighting, grabbing a little apathy, grabbing a little reason, etc. Nothing is enough. Suggestion of the benefits of, of, of getting boiling things down to almost nothing or very little. And then lastly, the principle of fun. A reminder to enjoy life today, the remembrance of yesterday, and the planning of tomorrow. And with that, the last thing I'm going to do now is uh, my, my uh, today's action plan. Today I have, uh, I'll, I'll finish this, I'll upload it, I'll read uh, the Bible. Then I'm going to uh, feed the dogs, walk the dogs, get to work. I have to remember today to work on arranging a, a, a meeting with the security team at um, the vendor. And then I have to... Uh, 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 make sure I remind the team we need to have the uh, change board representation and also get the banners on the websites. Excuse me, I'm going to work on my election project for sure today. Lots of, it's going to be 
be a key focus of the day. Uh, um, the car could break down. I could get sick. The fire which is burning over here could come and burn the house up. Family could get ill and die. All, all those things. I think I think I dwell on that quite enough. Uh, and then I'll come home and I'll enjoy a nice evening with my wife. Thanks for joining me. Be safe, but not too safe.